Hi everyone, we're back and today the topic for discussion is the patient in respiratory distress. Here is Jim, a 21 year old who was transported to the emergency room by paramedics. He was recovering from pneumonia at home when he developed respiratory distress. His respirations are now 6 O2 saturation, 86 percent and he has to be intubated. Now bear in mind that when a patient arrives in the emergency room they do a work upon them things like arterial blood gases are drawn you do vital signs and there are numerous tests that have to be done and his arterial blood gas revealed hypoxia which is low oxygenation naturally he's going to wind up on a ventilator and being on a ventilator for the first time is a very frightening feeling you're going to have a tube placed in your throat. You're not going to be able to close your mouth like you used to normally. All this is very frightening for a patient who does not know what it feels like. Anyhow, here are some helpful pointers. The medical staff has the responsibility to educate the patient and family. Typically what happens, the doctor discusses it with the families to find out who has the responsibility of making decisions. and even being in an ICU or in an ER with lines and tubes can be very intimidating so it it's important to try to reach that person's level and discuss as much as you can with them to eliminate their fears. Here are some helpful hints. The care plan should include patient and family teaching, um, relieve anxiety, sedation. Some patients may need to be sedated and have pain meds as well and <clears throat> well for the intubation part it's necessary to give me sedation and assessing the respiratory status before and after uh, intubation the clinical setting step by step chapters 2 and 8 are very helpful in providing that information at dearnurses.net then I just wanted to cover another there are endless reasons for respiratory distress there is an interesting case on cardiogenic shock which you will find at dearnurses.com Mrs. Z is a 46 year old female who was admitted to the hospital with a diagnosis of chest pain two years ago she had a myocardial infarction layman's term it's called a heart attack and has been coping fairly well this morning she woke up with shortness of breath and is extremely anxious so she's calling the nurse as you can see here yelling nurse I need help this patient ultimately will wind up in the intensive care unit because it's not just not possible to assert, to give all her needs on on the floor so she will be transferred to the ICU if you take the time to go to the case study you'll be able to read more here are some helpful hints if you have a patient in respiratory distress you may want especially the patient in CHF check the heart sounds the patient in CHF has a very classic gallop rhythm it almost sounds like a horse galloping and it's called an S3 and the lung sounds almost sound like bubbles when you have like taking a straw and blowing through a can of soda there are many uh, conditions that can lead to our respiratory distress in fact there are so many we are not going to be able to go into all of them today but I'll just give you a few so you can at least have an idea the patient who's had trauma may wind up in respiratory distress because you have things like a hemothorax or a pneumothorax which may occur there are also conditions like um, like I said CHF which is congestive heart failure, cardiogenic shock, which may follow a myocardial infarction, especially if it's the anterior wall of the heart where the pumping power is compromised. Then you might um, have other conditions like